little people are to be helped, ostensibly. Big names and big brass hold the floor. Little people hear nothing but the tramp of boots on their land, behind big words about big dams. Back in Blue Valley, a determined group of women decided if they could not be heard in Kansas City, they would be in Washington. So they gathered to alert everybody in the valley that the army engineers were on the march. Right to Washington, they implored their friends and neighbors. Tell of the hundreds of thousands of food producing acres to be forever drowned out of existence. The people responded. Letters not only to Washington, but to all parts of the nation, and the rural carriers happily accepted the increased burdens. But why not? All cooperate here in the valley. Even baby raccoons are mothered by the family cat. The post office at Cleburne receives such a deluge, it has moved from fourth class up to third class. With the roar of the flood and big talk still in the people's ears, the army engineers without warning and on a quiet Sunday morning move in upon the people of the soil to lay plans for Tuttle Creek Dam. Then the methods used to gain access to private land come out. This is what they said. Bill, we understand you're in trouble. We thought you knew you didn't have to let them in. They said they had your consent. Well, you should have checked with us. But they were our own engineers, government engineers. Besides, it was Sunday, almost everybody was at church. If they come to think of it, men, they did seem to be in an awful hurry. And while his underlings connive to get access to the land, General Pick chestily builds an impressive case before the Senate. They appropriate five millions for Tuttle Creek Dam. Hmm, five million. 87 million estimate, sort of toe in door tactic. But in one valley home sits college educated, land tilling Glenn Stockwell, the Blue Valley Association's new leader. Quietly he is sifting the truths from untruths. Unless he can undo this mass of misinformation, Tuttle Creek Dam will be the start of the greatest food producing destruction history has ever known. Facts and truths, and in writing to prove the mighty engineers wrong, they would have the facts and figures. But where among his mass of accumulated data? At last, here is the record. The Blue Valley leader has his proof. And in Washington, Stockwell produces records with proof that the Army engineers must have overlooked. Proof from the Government Weather Bureau showing the rainfall in Blue Valley was insufficient to flood Manhattan, as proclaimed by General Pick. Proof from the Government Geological Service that the Blue River was backed upstream eight miles. Therefore, Tuttle Creek Dam would have been valueless. Another attempt to get the Tuttle Creek Dam appropriation was thwarted by Stockwell's simple and honest facts. <laughs> Looks like the general talked too much, but Glenn had the facts. Sure glad to see him back. His words are, I'm mighty glad to find my friends and neighbors still respect our government. They're actually sorry for the army engineers and the tactics they seemingly had to use. All agree honesty is won, but there is a battle yet to be waged. Their ancient enemy, the flood. They want a workable solution for Blue Valley and all valleys under the shadow of the big dam threat. Flood control, they agree, is a trick phrase, cleverly coined, but ill-conceived and valueless in preventing a raging flood. That's it, why not prevent? 
then no outsider can invade and destroy and claim he's doing us good. Flood prevention became a crusade. Their past studies and applied experience convinced them they were on the right track. Sons and daughters of the valley, home from a great agricultural school, joined with their college-trained mothers and dads. Modern engineering methods of flood prevention through watershed treatment were merged with generations of practical experience in dealing with the Blue River. Pondering this in Washington, President Truman appoints a commission to make a Missouri Basin survey. National magazines take up the issue. Flood problems cannot be solved merely by building dams, says Reader's Digest. Country gentleman through Elmer Peterson, a staunch supporter of the Valley's efforts, quotes proof that floods have been prevented by stopping water where it falls with watershed treatment. Babies of a Blue Valley mother become famous as they illustrate, stop the water where it falls. Even New York Times suggests deferring dam until President Truman's survey is completed. Farm work comes to a halt. In Manhattan, a hearing for the President's Missouri Basin Survey is called. Congressman Clifford Hope from Kansas, an ardent supporter of the watershed treatment, is to preside. Testimony tells of research and why flood prevention is better than attempted flood control. Sound reasons for stopping floods before they start are presented. Why build big dams that will flood thousands of productive acres and still may not protect anybody? The commission's thoroughness convinced everyone that Congress would welcome the most exhaustive report, especially on Tuttle Creek Dam. Then without warning comes the party line emergency ring. Their congressman, Albert Cole, has jumped the fence, turned his back on the people of the Blue Valley to join the engineers hammering anvil chorus for Tuttle Creek Dam. Was this anvil chorus heard in Washington, or was it the boots of might make right? It will never be known. For a rump Congress of only 13 senators and 67 representatives suddenly voted $5 million to start Tuttle Creek Dam. Is this the beginning of that 150 seriously considered reservoirs? Dad blast it, their toe is in the door. Didn't even wait for President Truman's Missouri Basin report. Hardly before the news flash has dimmed, mighty machines are clutching, tearing, clawing into the rich soil of the valley. Here is the start of a cannibalistic plan that might well spread water over the valleys in the nearly 150 seriously considered reservoirs. This last blow was a crushing one. So up in the Emerald Hills, overlooking the wounds of their beloved land, they hover together in the twilight of the evening for meditation and prayer. Truly a good people in a good land. It is midnight in Blue Valley, says Reverend J. Wilbur Curry, and continues with the 16th chapter of Acts. Let us not lose faith. Let us not underestimate the power of God. It is hard to believe that anything so wrong as Tuttle Creek Dam can ultimately win. Productive soil is the greatest material gift of God to man. If we as a nation deliberately destroy it, we shall call down God's wrath upon us. A valley of weary men return to their fields. Ringing in their ears are Reverend Curry's words. It is hard to believe that anything so wrong as Tuttle Creek Dam can ultimately win. But what could they do? Harvest time required their every moment. The men work, unsuspecting that a plot is being hatched. The Blue Valley housewives, born of a real American pioneer spirit, agree to take over the fight. They decide to show the Army engineers and the whole world that they would fight for freedom of all valleys. <laughs> 